The world of Dungeons and Dragons is not a singular contained universe. The Forgotten Realms, Greyhawk, Eberron, and even Ravnica are all material worlds of different universes. In such a vast multiverse, there are a near limitless number of gods, as there are a near limitless number of humanoid cultures to worship and give power to these gods. Today, we shall focus on the world of Greyhawk and meet their god of justice, the legendary arch paladin Heronius. Before we continue, a special thanks to a fellow dungeon master who requested the topic for this video. If you have a topic you would like to suggest, leave it in the comments below, or leave it in my Discord. Links in the description. Now, let us learn of Heronius, the god of justice from the world of Greyhawk. The Valorous Knight, the Arch Paladin, the Invincible. Within the world of Greyhawk, Heronius is worshipped as a god within the human nation of Oridian. He is their god of valor, of chivalry and honor, of daring and justice, and war. He appears as a human man, tall, with long auburn hair and coppery skin, clad in fine chainmail. His eyes are those of a chivalrous knight, hardened by battle but holding a deep desire to protect the weak and defend the defenseless. As a god of war, he is always prepared for battle, typically depicted wielding a mighty battle axe or elegant longsword in hand. The story of Heronius begins at his birth. He was born to stern Alia, a powerful goddess of motherhood and law. Wishing to protect her newborn son, Alia coated the body of Heronius in Mirslam a powerful magic salve that would make his skin impervious to all but the most terrible of weapons, earning him his first of many titles as Heronius the Invincible. The Invincible was not an only child. His mother had many lovers, and the result of one such union was Hextor, the half-brother to Heronius and a fellow god of war. Unlike his brother, Hextor was not given the Mirslam salve, and so was always weaker in battle than his half-brother. This was but the first of many circumstances that would lead the brother gods down a path of war and resentment. Growing up, they would play and learn and train together, but as they grew, the differences in their temper became clear. Heronius was honorable, with a strong moral code, and fought only when it was right. Hextor was ferocious, brutal, and would look for any excuse to fight and prove his strength. One day, their mother, Sternalia, left to visit one of her many lovers. She instructed her sons to stand guard over her armor and let none touch it. That night, as the two young war gods slept, a servant of the brothers named Savnok stole the armor of Alia using its power to rule over a mortal nation as a tyrant. Hextor was first to act against this thief. He tracked Savnok down and loosed an arrow into the thief's heart. Hextor hid the body of his former servant and placed his mother's armor back where it belonged, pretending as if nothing had happened. Heronius was glad that his mother's armor was returned and the thief punished but his honorable heart was torn between lying to his mother or protecting his weaker brother. Ultimately, the Valorous One chose to go along with his brother's schemes, further straining their relationship. As time passed, their differences ate away at the half-brothers. Frustrated at being the weaker of the two, Hextor made a pact with the Lords of Evil. Grafting four new arms onto his body, Hextor was now an onslaught, a living army, and finally he was the equal to Heronius. But the Valorous One saw this as a betrayal of their family. He saw the nature of a true warrior as that of a knight. Victory meant nothing if it was at the cost of honor, and he saw his brother gave up his honor to the will of evil simply for power. 
but Hextor scolded his brother for an idealistic fool. Hextor claimed that strength and victory at any cost was the mark of a true warrior. From then on, the half-brothers became rivals and would fight each time their paths crossed. At first, this rivalry was considered healthy. The mortal kingdom of Iridian once worshipped both of them as the brothers of war. Heronius reflected the glory and honor to be found in war, while Hextor represented the brutal and bloody cost of victory. Over the centuries, the nation of Iridian was torn by a great civil war. Worshippers of Heronius became marginalized, and many defected to the rival nation of Nirond. Now the brother gods are patrons of rival kingdoms, locked in an eternal war. The Arch Paladin resides in his own realm within the Seven Heavens of Celestia, a place of rolling hills covered in emerald grass, golden fields of wheat, and small oak forests. Known as the Fields of Glory, the petitioners of Heronius train every day here in his disciplined and fearless style of combat. The faithful of Heronius, both living and dead, seek to live a life of honor, bravery, and chivalry, following the three tenets set by their god to accomplish this. These are known as the tenets of duty. 1. Duty to the people. It is the position of the strong to protect the weak. You must always fight to protect, always show mercy to the deserving, seek justice, not vengeance, and respect the authority of your superiors. 2. Duty to the Arch Paladin. Heronius is your lord, your teacher, and your general. Follow his example as a champion against evil. Put the needs of the church and the faith above those of mortals, and never betray your lord. 3. Duty to a lady. Treat all women as treasures to be respected. Pursue courtly love, and remain devoted to your beloved until your dying days. These tenets lead the worshippers of Heronius to lead a very strict and militaristic life. Soldiers, town watchmen, mercenaries, and especially paladins pray to the Valorous One. Heronius has a large number of paladins in his service, as he himself is one. The Arch Paladin, a lofty ideal that all paladins seek to mimic. The most well-known group of worshippers of Heronius are the Copper Crusaders and the Order of the Shining Sword, two groups of paladins that lead warlike campaigns of crusades against evil wherever they find it. The faithful of Heronius dye their armor and robes blue, with a silver trim, and emblazon the holy symbol of Heronius onto their clothing. The clerics and paladins of the god of chivalry have many rituals to honor him, but two stand out. The first is an unnamed ritual, in which clerics of Heronius seek to gain the boon of Mirslam. They embalm themselves alive in this substance. Few ever survive this ritual but those who do so are said to be almost as invincible as their god. The second, and more well-known ritual, is known as the Test of Valor. Before advancing in rake amongst the clergy, the faithful of Heronius must pass the Test of Valor, be it enduring great pain, hunting down an evil monster, or defending a remote village for an entire year on your own, without accepting reward. The test differs between individuals, and how high up the ranks they already are. The clergy's highest ranking members have endured dozens of tests of valor, and their number rank among the greatest heroes Greyhawk has ever seen, all to emulate the chivalry and glory of Heronius. Thank you for watching! On this channel I put together narrative Dungeons & Dragons lore videos. Every monster, magic spell, and fantastical setting has a story. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out a lot. Be sure to leave a comment or hop over to my Discord with a topic you'd like to see me cover on this channel, and I'll make it into a video. Links to all my social media in the description below, and I'll see you in the next one.